It was Jeff Bezos that said, do everything you can in your business to make your beer taste better and don't worry about anything else. Well, I don't actually drink, but I do like ice cream and I want my ice cream in my companies to taste the best it possibly can. So I've got to do some CPD, that's continual professional development. And I want to bring my team into the fold. So I've got my two senior ice cream people with me and Chuds is making this video and we're about to go in this massive building behind me. And we're going to learn from the world's best people how to make the best gelato and ice cream and also coffee so that we can take all those best practices into our shops to increase our sales, increase our profitability and get our customers coming back. So we're doing all we can to make our ice cream taste better. Let's go inside. I've bought 10 coffee machines this year. I've learned over the years, see all this technology, it's all showy and it likes to break. So we try and do it a bit more manually, but oh, they look sexy, don't they? Something about them. Something about them. We're going to be making our own coffee, selling it retail in our shops. So we're looking at machines that can make the packaging easier to reduce the labour spend like this. Oh, this is shrink wrapping now, I believe. It's probably £100,000. Why I'm keen on doing this is because there's no VAT on coffee. Cold coffee, no VAT. As soon as you add heat to it, turn it into a latte, there's that. So an iced coffee, like that you buy one of them fancy iced coffees that are all the rage, no that on it. But as soon as you add heat to it, VAT. And then um, raw coffee has no that on it. So all those little things, if you find those little tax wins, turnover tax wins in your business. So if you think about this, so a million pounds worth of hot coffees, a million pounds worth of cappuccinos or lattes, you would pay circa 200,000 pounds worth of that. If you sold a million pounds worth of cold coffees, you would be 200,000 pounds up. Mind boggling. Are they square croissants? I think so, yeah. Are you sure? It's so cool, it's isn't it? But much easier to make. Round ones are. Square ones are a bit harder, but I reckon a week or so I could probably do it. This Trial talent. Oh yeah, give me a week and I'll make you a square croissant. In a modern world, a very digital world, everyone's trying to do just online marketing, but this is really offline stuff. And I've done lots of exhibitions and actually found some of my biggest customers across the group from doing exhibitions, but they're very pricey. These guys here, I reckon they put quarter of a million quid into this stand with hotels, building it up, lots of staff, and the sheer cost of, you have to pay for the electric, you've got to deliver everything here, you've got like a seven, nine day pack up work here, take it all down. Look at these guys, the big red group, it's probably another 200 grand there. Just to build this up and pay for the space. What do you think the space is like? A thousand pound a square meter, isn't it? A thousand pound a square meter. Maybe, yeah, a quarter of a million quid easily. So you've got to make sure you sell a lot of coffee machines and a lot of stuff to get a quarter of a million pound back. But if you get one big gun, and do you know what? I think I've learned about exhibitions. The big guns, the big people, they go to them sort of stands. And unfortunately, it's either you go big or you go home. You've got to make a statement of these and then hopefully you get a return on your investment. And what a lot of people do is they take a really small stand and they don't make any money. And my advice, if you're going to do exhibitions, don't have a shell scheme. Be open and try and see, see they haven't got a shell scheme. Like the smaller stands will have like this rigid stuff around you that people, the, the exhibition will put up for you and then you attach your stuff. You want to be as open as possible and you want to be in the middle so that you get everyone around you. It's worth paying a little bit more. And the other top tip is if you're going to do exhibitions, make sure you speak at them. When you speak at them, you're going to get people to come to your stands. Give advice, give quality advice and then people will come and find you. That's what I always do. We've got to do a lemon ice cream. Try that lemon. Go and get that lemon. Chuds, you've got to try the lemon. It's a different gear, that. Can I try the strawberry? Yeah, it's good. It's very hard to make a good strawberry ice cream. Ours isn't actually that good, and I want to get it better. So we have two ranges of us. We have a retail range that we sell in Co-op and Asda, Morrison's, and then we have a Napoli range, which is more higher end. Uh, that we sell to restaurants and in our own shops. But we have to balance the cost of it so that our wholesale customers that sell it in restaurants will actually pay for it. This is 
amazing ice cream that's very expensive to make. The flavours hit you straight away. Interesting thing, when you're in hospitality and leisure, cutting back on furniture is not smart. You want to buy the best stuff. I've just manufactured a load of this with our team in China. The interest is good. Do you see, it's good quality. Hello, sir. Hi. Yeah, if we wanted to get these in the UK, you deliver to the UK? What, what, roughly, what's the price of this set? It's 100 euro for both, right? Yes, maybe. Try and do some research and making the best possible donuts ever. We decorate them to, I think, just beauty. We'll put a picture of what our donuts look like. And we've making all of the base dough mix now, but I want to make it even better than it already is. Just when people bite it and eat into it, they go, oh my God, this is the absolute best. I must come back tomorrow and buy another one. And that's what I've sort of learned about all this space since we've been running Rossi for the last three years. It's very easy to get someone to buy something once. The real skill is to get them to want to buy it again and come back. And um, you know, when you just eat a great croissant, you go, oh, that little coffee shop, they sold that best croissant. I can't wait to go back and have that. Really, we're trying to create habits. And if you just give it mediocre and it's okay, people just buy the best at price competitor. And uh, we want to be good value, but taste outstanding. So you're best in class. That's what we want to do. We've got a really good cake range. We want to make the best ice cream possible, but we'll just keep getting, every year we'll get better and better. But our model, is we make money at weekends and school holidays and we need to come up with a Monday to Friday offer so that if you look at Greg's and Wenzel's they're like great businesses that have got brilliant models and we've got yeah. a weekend model apart from one of our shops where we do we do do hot food at one of our shops and that that's the one that makes the most money but okay. we, we want to get a really good sandwich range like a really good pastry range and then have it complement as a full service yeah. offer Much better, isn't it? It's 35 grand if you buy 100,000. 35 grand, I'm just trying to wear that out. 0 0.3, 35 pence. 0 0.35 pence times a thousand is 350. Oh, it is. When you scale things up and you start talking about quantities of 100,000, so to buy 130, 100,000 five litre, we call these Napoli tubs for scooping. Before you know it, you spent 35 grand. That's like a deposit on a house, isn't it? With your stamp duty and your legal fees for when you start out in life. Or you could buy ice cream tubs. What a float your boat. Thank you. Thank you. We'll definitely do some stuff for you. Sure, thank you so much. We are now in the coffee section. Now, as a company that spends well in excess of 100,000 pounds a year on coffee and sells millions of pounds worth of coffee in all of our shops and all of our visitor attractions, it therefore makes sense to make the best possible product that we can. Now, actually, coffee beans come in green. Done quite a bit of research on that. Then you roast them to that brown color that we're used to. Then you grind them up into your favorite coffee drink. So we need to buy a machine like that, maybe slightly bigger, that does all the roasting. This is computerized. We've got to learn about it. And the idea really is our ice cream, amazing, talented team, then switch over to do most of that in the winter. So that the Rossi business has this real regularity of cash flow. Now we've done a big stage of that by opening the bakery because that gives us not just ice cream to our bow, but strong bakery arm to our bow. Now we're gonna make coffee as well. So uh, let's find out how much one of these costs. What do you reckon? I reckon that's about 110,000 pounds. Let's find out. How, how much is this roughly to the UK? Uh, so this is the 15 electric, and it's uh, fully electric, so 47 and a half thousand euros. And this is our 60 kg. And how much would that all cost? Uh, everything in together is 160,000 euros, uh, yeah. but that's a special offer. Normally it's around 200,000. So 
So we're in this flavour stand. Look at it. it. Must have cost the millions to have this stand here. I've just seen their dinosaur themed ice cream, their Pokemon themed ice cream, and they've actually got the official Biscoff ice cream. And I think if you buy their base flavours and then turn it into our ice cream, you can actually use these brands to sell themed ice cream. And it's got me thinking really that we could be doing that our visitor attractions and would other visitor attractions buy into Pokemon themed ice cream? Would they buy into, I think, I think Paw Patrol themed ice cream? And then you get a little toy to go with it. It's really exciting. I'm gonna try some of, can I have the coconut please? Grazie. Just so much good ice cream. Can I try the lemon as well? Grazie. All the bases of the ice cream, which we call pastes, these guys supply the pastes and then you add your milk, your cream, your butter, or however ingredients you finish your ice cream with. This, this is fantastic. The flavours are just so good. And do you know what? I don't care what business you're in. If you actually bother to get on a plane and see what the rest of the world are doing, and you steal all that innovation and you bring it back to your country, just explode the growth of your business. This stuff isn't being done in the UK of this quality. Right. Mango, please. That's really good. Thank you. Well, it really tastes like mango, doesn't it? There's no ice in it, is there? Try that. Do you think there's dairy there. in this? No, no dairy. Can I try the uh, passion fruit? Why don't almond sorbets taste like this? Passion fruit tastes like passion fruit. Which one's raspberry? Oh, I'll try some raspberry, thank you. I'm going to see. Yeah, that raspberry. What, why does it taste better than ours? Can I try some coconut, please, as well? Yeah, coconut's good. <laughs> that's a sorbet. Good quality ice cream, has no air in it. Best way I think about it, making a glass of Ribena, but more water in it, dilutes the flavour. With ice cream, a cheap ice cream has loads of air pumped into it to expand it, therefore losing the flavour. This ice cream, this is a very high quality whippy ice cream. And usually you pump loads of air in a whippy ice cream to make it go further, but this, it's got hardly any air in it. It tastes like a gelato scoop ice cream in whippy, with this beautiful hazelnut. You want to make it this quality, but you've got to balance up the commercials with your customers will actually pay for how much it would cost to do this properly. And this ice cream here is so good, but it'll cost four or five times more to make than what we're currently doing, so you've got to balance it all up. Grazie. We made coconut ice cream. Let's see if theirs is better than ours. That's good. I don't know if it's better than the other one. We tried one earlier, but this is still very good. Okay, this is Stephanie. She's from Italia. And she's going to use this cool machine from Carpagiani, who make a lot of our machines. And that machine makes all these little ice cream delicatessen tea things. So she's got a silicon pouch here. I think she's going to fill them up using that machine. What I'm looking for here is do I think we can do this easily? And what I'd like to do is everyone that buys a coffee from us one of our coffee shops gets one of these free little ice creams rather than just a lotus biscuit which every bloody coffee shop does it's just trying to find those little nuances those little usps unique selling points look if we can make lollies like that as well people talk about this right we're watching let's go so she's going to put it in this blast freezer minus 35 for three minutes Bear in mind your home freezer, so your home freezer is minus 18 to minus 22. This is a lot colder. Blast it really quickly so there's no ice crystals in there because there's quite a lot of water in that. You know, it's like a whippy ice cream, so it's got to be minus 35 to get rid of all that. We call it ice crystals in the game, so it tastes beautiful and smooth when you have it out. So three minutes in there. So that's a chocolate on the outside. I'll bite into it now. It's delicious. That wouldn't be very expensive, would it, to make? No, it's, it's the tiniest bit. The most expensive part would be the chocolate shell. Yeah. This little here, this vertical batch freezer, this is the original way ice cream was made. So these little knives here, or blades, better word, blades, scrape 
the ice around here and they turn the mixture slowly slowly into ice cream push all the air out which gives the maximum flavor the one we use is literally massive uh, the one that we've got is worth about 35 grand in the uk i reckon that one's only seven thousand pounds i'm guessing no not as much as that maybe five thousand pounds so we buy lots of cones i mean hundreds of thousands of cones a year and i've always wanted to make the logo that we've got Rossi on our cones. If you look down here, and you can see a famous M down there. Whose logo is that, eh? I want to make our own cones. That's good. Oh, you don't want to make your own cones. Look at his little face, look. No. 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 I think we can make a better cone. It's not just about saving the money, although that's my big driver, but it's about having our logo on the cone. That machine there, well, this one here that you see is about 26,000 euros. Then the one that's automatic is about 40,000 euros. But when they release this, like this, all the cones just drop to the floor it was saying. And then you have to manually pick them up and count them into the box, which sounds like a bloody bit of a nightmare to me. I said, well, there must be something that just packs them for you. And he said, si, senor. And he showed me that thing up there, and that's anywhere between 197,000 euros up to 400,000 euros, does it all for you and it makes 3,800 cones an hour. I don't think that's bad value for money. I want us to have the best cones in the business. We do have the best cones in the business. Yeah, but they don't have our logo on, do they? And we're paying 15p a cone at the moment, and this lot are saying we can get it for 1p a cone, plus overhead and labour. So say five pence to make a cone, and we're paying 15 pence now. So I'm adding one, pe one pence for the ingredients, and then four pence for overhead and paying the investment back. I'd be more like six or seven P, because you've got to pay back the 200,000. We're halving the price of our cones. I'm now back from Italy. I'm here in my office in the sunny United Kingdom. Three things that I learned from this trip that I think are key takeaways that business owners and entrepreneurs can take from this video. First of all is if you don't innovate, you evaporate. It's one of my keynote phrases out of the James Sinclair playbook. The marketplace, whatever business or sector you're in, is constantly innovating. We've got the internet today, but if you go back 25 years, fax machines were all the rage. Look where we've come in communication. Or whatever you are in, like here, hospitality and leisure, it's a constant process of innovation. And I want to make sure that we're at the pinnacle of it. And there's really two things that I think great entrepreneurs focus on. That's innovation, marketing, and three things. Innovation, marketing, and culture. So that's a good part of it. The marketing, I've spoke about loads on the business. And the second or the third thing is culture. And I was with three of my key team people and I spent good quality time with them. I got to know them. And one of them, there's a little superstar in there, Flynn, who's like one of our R&D manufacturing managers at the Rossi Ice Cream Company. I just didn't realise what a little superstar he was, how passionate he is and how much he cares. So me spending time with one of our new key, t key lieutenants to build them up in their career and understand just how much they care was a brilliant use of my time. And the third thing that I get out of these trips is getting out of environment because my best marketing ideas, my best innovation ideas come when I'm outside of my regular environment. Well, I always say this, you know, going for a walk in the woods or going on holiday is when I get my best ideas when I'm out of my regular place. And so this weekend gave me a chance to really think of some great ideas. I was looking at one of the ideas, you know, I was thinking about how can we make traditional ice cream more kiddie friendly yeah we can make a candy floss flavor or we can make a birthday cake flavor or a, a pink bubblegum flavor and we do do all those things but when i was out there i saw a dinosaur themed ice cream but then i thought we could do a unicorn themed ice cream and put a little toy on top and um, so that's just some of the innovation that came out of this trip but then the other side of those three things innovation and culture but that's really easy to market kids themed ice creams with a little toy on top and we know that mcdonald's do that so spectacularly well so i got three things there something that's a really good marketing hook i got loads of innovation and i built culture with my team 
So get out of the environment with your team. Go on these little trips. You just don't realize just how much they can grow your business. If you're loving this video, make sure you like and subscribe. Let me know in the comments what you think, and I'll see you in the next one. And don't forget to check out our podcast. We've got a brand new podcast channel now called James Sinclair Podcast. Put a link in the video description. You can see videos of me coaching business owners to grow their business. And if you want to come see me at one of my events to grow your business, get all the tickets at jamesinclair.net. They're incredible value for money. See you in the next one.